Hi, I'm Ramat. I'm Richard. And I'm Antonietta. And this story, this story, this story could save your life. And this is the very first episode of Triple E's new series, True Crime Niger. In this series, we present to you true stories of crimes that happen in our country. We hope that by sharing these stories, we all become more aware of the types of crimes that happen here. And by being aware, we become smarter at detecting and hopefully preventing similar crimes. And as always, we welcome feedback. Reach out to us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp. And if there's a specific case you want us to cover, we're always open to your suggestions. So with that, let's get started. Today, we bring you the unfortunate case of the murder of a young lady who met her end in the pursuit of her ambitions. It's Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning, 22nd of July, 2012. The lobby of the Cosmilla Hotel in Festac, Lagos is busy with guests checking in and out. Vivian Anye, the receptionist, had just finished her night shift and was about to hand over to her colleague, Miss Ifenyua in Jebu. Vivian tells Ifenyua that the guests Ifenyua had checked in the day before had not paid and are still in the room. Also, they came back with a young lady around noon that same day. Now, after they finish gisting, Vivian is done for the day and she leaves. Ifenua settles down and starts her shift. She opens her novel and begins to get lost in her book. A couple of hours later, from the corner of her eyes, she sees a guest walking down the stairs. She puts her book down and begins to approach him. She recognizes him as the guest she had checked in the day before. She asks if he plans to keep the room since it was about to expire in a few minutes, but he ignores her and he keeps walking. As he's about to exit, he turns and says yes, that he's keeping the room because his girlfriend is still in there. He tells her that he's going to an ATM to withdraw money so that he can pay for the room in cash. And since he said his girlfriend is still in the room, Ifenua did not see a problem in letting him go to the ATM. Wait, how is it possible to check into a hotel without paying or leaving something like a deposit or credit card or something behind? Well, back then, remember, this was 2012, it was common in some Nigerian hotels to check in without really paying. So if anyone goes back to her novel, but seconds turn to minutes and minutes turn to hours and suddenly it's 2.55 p.m. and she finally noticed that the guest had not returned. Now at 3 p.m., the phone rings. If anyone picks up the call, it's the guest on the other line. And he tells her that he is not coming back with the money and that she should go to the room and collect the money from that idiot. Wait, who is he referring to as an idiot? He's referring to his girlfriend in the room. So if anyone quickly calls the room, the phone rings and rings and rings. No one is answering the call. She runs to her manager's office and both of them run up to the room and knock. Still, no response. They head back down and the manager gives Ifenua the master key and tells her to quickly go open the door while he stays at the front desk. Yeah, that makes sense for him to send her to be the one to open the door since they expect to find another woman in the room. Right, that's true. So if anyone grabs the keys and she hurries back to the door, she opens the door and is shocked by what she sees. From the door, she sees a pair of legs touching the floor, but they were not moving and they appeared to be taped together. She carefully takes a few steps towards the bed. Her eyes are adjusting to the scene in front of her. 
She screams and quickly runs out of the room. What Efenua saw was a naked woman's body with her two hands behind her back and something stuffed in her mouth. The woman appears to be dead. And after Efenua runs back to tell her manager, they call the police. Hey, poor Efenua. Can you imagine how she must have felt? I can't even imagine. It must have been terrible. So the police arrive at the hotel and go straight to the room. They find the body, the hands were taped together, and they were also chained together. The police also found a handkerchief and hair nuts stuffed in her mouth. They searched the room and they searched, but they could not find an identification for this woman. No identification, not even a national ID or driver's license? No, nothing, not even a passport. There was no way for them to know who this woman was. The police then started to interrogate Ifenua. She told them what she knew. At 8 a.m. the day before on the 21st of July, she checked in two men, but they didn't pay up front. She told them that on the 21st, her co-worker Vivian noticed that the two men walked in with a lady around noon, but they did not collect any information about the lady. What about the two guys? Did they leave any information about who they are? Well, in Nigeria, you have to write your name in a hotel register, and I'm sure the police checked the register. Yeah, but what are the chances they actually used their real names? Exactly. The men left little information at the front desk, and honestly, whatever they left behind was probably fake. So the woman's body is moved from the hotel to a morgue, and without an ID, they couldn't reach any of her family members or friends, so her body just laid there for about seven days. Now... In Jos, it's Sunday, July 28, 2012. A mother is panicking and dialing frantically on her phone. Her daughter had gone on a business trip to Lagos six days ago, and she has not been answering her calls. All her phones were switched off. But this time, as she dies, the phone finally rings. Someone picks up, but it's not her daughter's voice. It's a strange man who tells her her daughter is sick and couldn't talk to her on the phone. Then the line goes dead. What? Yes, and this stranger's words leaves this poor woman more worried. Her head is spinning with thoughts of all the bad things that might have happened to her daughter. Her phone rings. It's a call from her daughter's phone. She quickly answers it and it's still that strange voice. He tells her he has kidnapped her daughter and wants 20 million naira ransom. Oh my God. Right? This disturbed mother reports the case to the police a few days later. Now, according to Chinese television, she actually received a second call two weeks later where the stranger told her that her daughter was dead. The police traced the call to Festat, a town in Lagos. The police soon figured out that the case of this woman's missing daughter could be connected to the homicide at the Cosmilla Hotel. So they asked the woman to come and identify the body in the morgue. She gets to the morgue, hoping and praying that the body she sees is not her daughter. When they brought out the body, she just knows. She falls to the ground. She cries out. It's her daughter, Cynthia Udoka Osokogu. Cynthia Udoka Osokogu is the young lady who is dead. She was a 24-year-old postgraduate student at the Nasarawa State University in Kefi. She was studying for her master's in public administration. Her first degree was in English language. Cynthia was an industrious and ambitious young lady. And while she was studying for her master's, she opened a boutique store in Kefi, which she named Dress Code. She was into fashion. Hey, yeah, such a bright young lady with a promising future ahead of her. I know, it was such a loss. Now, according to her parents, retired Major General Frank Osokogu and Joy Rita Nkem Osokogu, Cynthia often made business trips to Lagos whenever she wanted to restock her boutique. And she always told them about those trips. 
So on Thursday, the 21st of July, 2012, she flew to Lagos from Abuja to meet with these new retailers who would offer her products at a cheaper price. Maybe she was going to check if the products were of good quality. Do we know who the retailers were? So we know that when the police did their investigation, they eventually arrested six people. Among the people arrested was a pharmacist, a businessman, two brothers, and their cousin. How did they get all these people? We don't know the details of how the police found them, but we do know that the CCTV footage at the hotel was key to their investigation. Oh, so there was a CCTV camera? Yes, and it was working. We know that they traced the call to a location in Festac. Now, on Monday, August 20th, the Lagos State Police Commissioner sent officers to the location. They got there, they raided the place and arrested the first two men. And I'm assuming they knew who to arrest because of the CCTV footage. Yes, I'm sure that definitely helped. These two were taken to Area E Police Station in Festac. And even though the police had the CCTV footage, they still called the receptionist, Ifenua, to come and identify the men. She confirmed those were the two men she checked into that room in Cosmilla Hotel on the 21st of July, 2012. Oh, wow. They found them in a month. That's actually good. Yes. Now, according to the Lagos State Police Commissioner, Ezek, who is 23 years old, confesses. But as the case unfolds, the other guy, Nwa before gives a different story. Now, during trial, Nwa before told the court that Cynthia was his girlfriend. He said they were quite intimate as lovers. He even proposed and she accepted, but pleaded that they wait until Christmas to get married. He added that while they were dating, Cynthia visited his house in Lagos like five times, and in return, maybe to solidify their relationship, he was supposed to go and see her parents in their hometown in Delta State. Now, wow. Is that true, though? Well, not quite. During cross-examination by the prosecutor, that whole story falls apart. Because they asked him about Cynthia's birth date, he didn't know. They asked him about her parents' name, he didn't know. Even her hometown, he didn't know. Ah. How are you dating someone and you don't know their birthday? That's like the first question you'd ask. I know, right? And the judge throws that story out. So what actually happened? Well, remember Ezek, the guy who confessed? According to him, this all began on Facebook. They sent Cynthia a friend request. She accepted and they started chatting. She told them about her line of business and that she usually goes to Lagos on trips to buy goods. Wait, I've heard you mention they and them like three times now. Did both of them send her a request at the same time? Well, according to the cable news, she added Nwa before first, and they started chatting via her BlackBerry messenger. Then maybe after about four months, she added his cousin Ezeke. Oh. Yeah, so according to Ezeke's confession... They invited her over to Lagos on the ground that they will sell the goods at a cheaper rate to her. She agreed. I mean, she's a businesswoman. When she arrived in Lagos, they went to pick her up at the airport and took her straight to Cosmilla Hotel in Festa. But why are they meeting at a hotel? (laughs) That's really a good question. Maybe she trusted them enough, or maybe they told her that they had the goods in the hotel room and that she was supposed to just go there and see them. Or is it possible that she was dating one of them and that's why she trusted them? That's a good point, but no, no, that can't be. Because remember, Mwa before didn't know anything about her, not even her birthday. So I doubt that they were dating. It was the early days of the internet kind of picking up in Nigeria. And honestly, I don't think people really understood or knew what the potential dangers were. So... They somehow convinced her to go to the hotel room, and it was there that they offered her a drink, which Ezeke, in his confession, says was poisoned. But after she drank it, they discovered that the drink didn't work on her. So they attacked her, tied her up, and used sellotape to cover her mouth. 
Now, after that, they beat her to try to force her into telling them where she kept her money. When they didn't get any money from her, they tied her mouth again and strangled her to death. Oh my God. That's not even the worst part. After they did all of that, they slept by the side of her dead body until the next day. What? Then they abandoned her in the hotel. I can't even process this. I know. It's crazy. Now, before Cynthia's body was released to her parents for burial, and you can find this information on Premium Times, they carried out an autopsy at the Ikeja General Hospital morgue. The results came out and it proved that she was actually drugged with rofinol, also known as Rufi, but it wasn't the cause of her death. The pathologist describes the torture she went through before she died as petechial hemorrhage and also reveals that Cynthia suffered pulmonary edema, which is an overweight of the lungs from being soaked by blood. I don't even want to imagine this. It's terrifying. Oh, please don't. I, I wouldn't want to imagine it either. As the investigation continued, more arrests were made. Oh, yes. You mentioned six arrests in total, including a pharmacist and a businessman. Right. And according to Premium Times, the pharmacist was arrested for selling the Rofenol over the counter without a doctor's prescription. Ezekiel's younger brother, Nonso, was arrested for helping them sell Cynthia's three phones. Now, the businessman was the guy who bought the phones from Nonso, but he was later released. There was one other arrest, but we weren't able to find much information about that one. What about Mwabufo? Did he eventually confess? Well, he gave a statement. But according to Premium Times, Ezeke further confessed that this is actually not the first time that they had done this. Apparently, luring ambitious young women and robbing them is what these two guys did for a living. He said Cynthia was their sixth victim. Goodness, there were five other victims, but did they kill all the others? It's not clear. We don't know for sure if they killed all the others or if it was just Cynthia. So a month later, after Cynthia had been laid to rest, the suspects were charged and trial started at the Yaba Magistrate Court on Monday, the 27th of August, 2012. Now, during trial, Ezeke tried to withdraw his confession, and he claimed that it was made under police pressure, but the judge didn't buy that. Well, the Nigerian police have been accused of that type of thing in the past. Yes, but this time, the police recorded the confessional statement, and the video evidence of the interrogation process was reviewed by the court. Now, after several sittings, the court was satisfied that the confession was not given under duress and admitted it in evidence. Fast forward to 8th of February, 2013. The court had arraigned them on six counts of conspiracy, murder, armed robbery, rape, unlawful administration of obnoxious substance, and forceful administration of obnoxious substance. Now, according to Section 221 of the Lagos State Criminal Law, a person who commits murder shall be sentenced to death. Whoa. And finally, on Thursday, March 23rd, 2017, Five years later, Mwabufo and Ezeke were convicted at the High Court in Igbo Shere and sentenced to death by hanging. <sighs> this is just a sad story all around. For Cynthia and her family, and even for the culprits and their families, it's just really sad. Well, you know what they say, every day is for the thief, but one day is for the owner. Wasn't that written by that popular writer, Teju Ko? Yes. It means that a criminal will eventually be caught one day, no matter how long they have been in the act. And in this case, the police and the justice system worked exactly as designed. Cynthia and her family got justice. Now, we are not sure if the death sentence has actually been carried out. As at the time of this recording, we checked, but we couldn't find any information. But even if they are still alive, we do know that they are in jail, so at the very least, they can't hurt anyone.
Now, Cynthia's murder exposed the dark side of the internet in a way that most people just could not imagine at that time. It made a lot of people become cautious of their social media friends, especially those on Facebook. Absolutely. You know, one has to watch the kinds of friend requests they accept on all social media platforms. This world we live in has so many characters and not all of them are trustworthy. So true. Now, after Cynthia's case, the federal government proposed strict regulation to allow the sale of Refinol at only predetermined locations in the country. Oh, I'm glad to hear something good came out of this. Cynthia didn't die in vain. No, she definitely did not die in vain. Join us next week as we cover another story. This time, it's the story of a woman who was murdered while looking for love. True Crime Naija is a Triple E Media Production. Copyright 2021 Triple E Media Productions. If you enjoyed this episode of True Crime Naija and want to hear more, subscribe to our 234 Audio YouTube channel. Visit our website at 234audio.com and download our 234 Audio app. Episodes of this podcast and our other podcasts can also be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe and leave us a review. This episode was produced by Richard Anyabe, Antonieta Kalunta, Maria Ukmashi, John Iwodi, Dominic Tabakaji, Sam Tabakaji, and Nico Rivers. Executive producer, Ramat Mohammed. Special thanks to Rabia Hadeja, Aredi Isha, and Mala Iwa Badu Ikaleku. Stay alert, stay alive. See you next week.